Gold prices are sharply lower this Tuesday as the market awaits the Fed minutes tomorrow. We have Frank Holmes and Gold Game Film coming up. Frank, how are you? It's good to be here. All right, Frank, real quick, the uh, Fed minutes come out tomorrow afternoon. What uh, were you expecting from, uh, from the FOMC? Well, probably an update from other financial data. I think what's really important is that industrial production has been declining for five months in America. So this thought process of interest rates are going to rise in June, I've been saying, no, it's not going to happen for this year. I'd be so surprised if something happens because the economy really is is not as robust as, as they think it is. Um, so I think that that's a, a key factor. Okay, so off to our OT segment. We're going to start with opportunities and the first one being gold mining stocks outpacing bullion demand. Now in your SWOT report, a uh, pretty good chart there showing the first three months of the year. Gold miners are looking good. Uh, is that sustained, do you think? Well, remember a couple of years ago, so many CEOs in the gold space were losing their jobs. And the big factor for that, when we look at the 2005 and six and seven, is the returns on capital by gold miners was over the top, much greater than the TSX or the S&P 500. And then they went on this, this binge of buying anything and everything and diluting the shareholders capital. And then costs went through the roof with that. So a lot of CEOs have lost their jobs. They've cut back. They're very much focused on the returns of capital to uh, the shareholders. And these stocks are starting to perform much better. Uh, so it's better stewardship at the very top. And boards of directors are waking up to the importance of this stewardship. And we're going to benefit from it. Stocks are trading better. Now, another opportunity could be one coming out of China related to uh, an eventual U.S. interest rate hike, whenever that may be. Um, it, it seems like there's a door opening here for, for China. What, what do you see there? Well, China, remember, has the largest trillions of dollars, U.S. dollars. So the stronger U.S. dollar only gives them more spending power. But I think the real issue here that we should be looking at is this move by China to become a powerful country, not just in, in trade, but also its currency to get appreciated and recognized. And we've commented on this, this drive. The IMF is coming up. They would like to have the special drawing rights. They want to be at the table where their currency, because of the biggest commodity drivers of demand, the 800-pound gorilla we've commented on, they want not just being the demand for commodities, but their currency has relevance. So the only way to do that is to back it by gold. And so we're seeing and witnessing this huge shift of gold leaving North America, going to Switzerland and then showing up in China and it's showing up in retail and the thought process that the banks have been buying gold. Now switching over to threats, uh, we'll start with gold ETFs. Uh, holdings are at a seven month low right now. Investors seem to be turning their backs on uh, their gold ETF holdings, is that uh, something that you see continuing? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, some of the s smarter hedge funds like D.E. Shaw have increased their exposure. And I think that Ray Dalio uh, said it so well that uh, people should have an exposure to gold. Ray Dalio at Bridgewater does manage the largest hedge fund in the world. Uh, and he is a proponent of having gold as a balancing factor. And you rebalance. Uh, it's important from historical reasons, as he comments on. And then we're taking a look at what's taking place of expansion of the, of the central banks in Europe and what's taking place in Japan and in America. It's just prudent. And another threat would be South Africa's gold mining industry, who is looking to face off again with unions, among other issues arising. Now, Frank, is this downward spiral with this, uh, this once uh, prolific gold producing giant going to continue? Yes, it's, it's, I was there several months ago, and, and it truly is tragic. It's tragic for their view of the world. But you still have this in North America, in San, sorry, Latin America. You had this in Chile. The president of the country turns all the power over to the unions, and uh, it becomes everything for supersedes natural log logic. The largest source of foreign currency for Chile is copper. And now their copper prices decline, their production is declining. And what are they doing? They're taxing the middle class. So people don't like that. You've seen this happen in Colombia with Santos doing that with the oil patch. South Africa is just much more aggressive and should be a case study for these other leaders in Latin America to see what a disaster. Here was the largest gold producer in the world as a country. It was the largest source of foreign currency for their country to deploy for other economic development. And it's now eighth in the world. Workers want an 80% increase, way above the inflation. Uh, we saw what it's done to other commodities. So 
it still is this difficulty of grasping that there has to be a balance between labor and capital. And when you look at South Africa, it's extremely unbalanced towards labor. And with that, it brings us to our touchdown pass of the week. Frank, where are you throwing it? The big, big thing to follow, I believe, is PMIs. We've got flash PMIs. I mentioned earlier about industrial production slowing down in America. We're gonna get the flash PMI out of China. We're gonna get PMIs in the US, and we're gonna get PMIs out of Europe. And these, remember, PMIs is a forecasting tool updated every month on the demand for commodities to manufacture goods. So that trend is important that the one month is above the three months because historically it's led to higher demand and economic activity and job creation. And right now it's sloppy. Thanks, Frank. And thank you for watching this edition of Gold Game Film. As always, comments and questions are welcome at newsfeedback at kiko.com. Have a great week.